Currently, the game card 3 is operating in computers running as fast as 200 MHz and is expected to operate in those running as fast as 300 MHz. 300 MHz computers. Nonsense! Oh, no. Virtual reality, which in 1991 meant 3D graphics. Okay, so this game card 3 thing is not relevant, it's some joystick thing. We won't look at that right now. So we have here the Virtual Reality Studio from Domark or Dumark. Uh, from 1991, you could build your own virtual reality. It was actually a 3D engine that uh, included uh, the 3D modeling so you could create your graphics, you could create your entire environments, and then it had a programming language that would uh, work for collisions and you know, destroying items or, or whatever you wanted to do with it. So you could actually create games or, or whatever. So let's open it up here. And uh, we've got this manual, which uh, the manual is, is actually <laughs> really good. I remember it being very uh, informative here. It has uh, a lot of information about the interface. So it'll show you how to navigate the menus and uh, everything like that, how to create objects and so forth. And then the best part of it is the programming language here. So uh, it's a very, it looks a lot like basic and it just uses uh, built-in <clears throat> uh, variables and things that you could uh, interface with in the language. Let's take a look here. If shot, then destroy. And if. <laughs> That's a really great language and uh, really easy to use if you were an entry-level programmer. I actually programmed in BASIC uh, when I got this, so this was something that it was a usable. Uh, it was time consuming to create the 3D objects, but if you stuck with simple things, you could do some pretty cool stuff. Let's see what else we have. So I've got a disc here. So this looks like disc 2. So I've got disc 2, which has the EGA and the Tandy graphics mode. So I'm assuming the other disc had VGA, maybe CGA. Um, but I only have one of the discs, so the other one could still be in my 386 leading technology machine. Not sure about that, but we'll have to use one of those graphics nodes to demonstrate it. We got a Virtual Reality Studio 2.0 exclusive offer, 2995 plus sales tax, exactly 250 sales tax, I don't know how they know that, and $3 shipping. Oh man, what version is this? Is this one? Yeah, so I, I don't know if they were selling me 2.0 right when we got this. Uh, my older brother is actually the one who acquired this. Just like he's the one who introduced me to programming. Oh, I'm a lot for that. Let's fire up this disc and see if we can get this thing to work. And maybe we'll use Tandy mode and uh, give it a try. Okay, let's load up the software. Okay, so everything's loaded up. I have set DOSBox to mimic a Tandy machine because I don't have a Tandy machine. So we're just gonna have to settle for that. Let's get into our menu here where we choose our graphics mode. We're gonna choose the Tandy graphics mode. I'll go ahead and use a mouse. I don't wanna just use a keyboard. And uh, let's just choose IBM sounds here. So here we go. Uh, I'm literally in the environment that I can create my objects in and create my code for. Now you can see I can turn here, I can move around using these controls, using the mouse here. So I can develop my area here and I can also walk around and kind of test things out. So that's pretty neat. So uh, I can even just start creating objects here. So let's create an object, uh, how about a pyramid? There it is. It's right there, ready to go. Obviously I didn't get to choose uh, any specifications for that, but I can, I can change those if I want to. So let's go to object, edit object. I'll choose my pyramid here. Okay, and now I can uh, work with it. So I can, for example, move it. Well, maybe first thing I'll do here is I'll drop it down. And uh, I could stretch it here. So we'll just stretch it a little bit. Go. And stretch it to the other side. So you can see I've, there we go. Created the uh, object I want. So I'll just click OK. And uh, there's my, my object. So. Now it's in the environment, I can move around it, right? And you can see it, that beep indicated that there was a collision detected. So all of that is actually built in 
and I can use those events uh, in my code, which is uh, really cool. So, um, so for example here, if I just click condition and then choose my pyramid, okay, now I can actually start to write some code surrounding events for this uh, pyramid. So for example, a collision. So maybe this is like a health thing and I'm gonna pick it up so I wanna have it disappear when it collides. So I can literally just say if collided and it even uses these question marks to uh, make it, I don't know, I think intuitive. Then, and there's an invisible command and I would just set my object number which I noticed in the last menu is object two was the pyramid. I just put my end if in here and uh, that's it. If I collide with it, make it invisible. Let's, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna run as fast as I can. There we go. It's gone. So cool. For the time, 1991, this is an absolutely amazing development engine, uh, in my opinion. Something so easy to use. The uh, code is well documented. Pretty powerful. Had all the different graphics modes. You could do this in VGA, it would look a little better. I mean, just absolutely uh, amazing what this thing can do. Uh, a lot of fun, and uh, even for me, I got it, I believe, my brother got it in 1994, so it was a really cool thing, even in 1994, uh, it came out in 1991. So, pretty neat. Uh, if you have any questions about it or anything, leave them in the comments. I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna do a full-on uh, development uh, video here, but I might do that in a future video. So if you want that in a future video, just mention it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Well, before you go, Let's get you subscribed to the channel, why don't we? Yes, indeed. Oh, no. Huh, I guess I'm going to have to trust you to subscribe on your own.